Hello again, Joe the CRM chap here with another video in my series all around Microsoft Exam MB400, the effectively the developer's exam for Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. Quite a mouthful. So in today's um, video, we're going to be taking a look at one of some of the concepts around entity customizations that you'll probably need to have a good awareness of if you're going to be tackling the exam. So if you followed the previous video, you, you, you may recall that we have set up a solution for our particular uh, common data service environment. So we see up here MB400 demo up here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this the next step further. We're going to create a brand new entity, add a couple of fields onto there, and also create a few relationships. And we'll discuss as we're going through it, you know, what the various different properties mean and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully by the end of the video, you've got a good awareness and says, okay, I can go off and I can do this myself. So we're in our solution in the new Powerhouse portal. We just want to go to new entity up here. It's going to take a second just to load up the uh, the entity um, properties over here. So today, in today's video, we're just going to what we're going to capture. We're going to capture, let's say, uh, a booking. Let's say. Um, what's really good about this is that you the plural for your particular entity is auto completed, as is also the name of the entity. So that's quite handy. Um, so this is the logical name of the entity that typically most developers will have to have um, be aware of when you're working with the system programmatically. All entities in the system must have a primary field, and this is typically just like a name or a label for the particular entity. Um, so we're just going to maybe call this one, let's say, booking uh, description. Again, it auto-populates the field on there. So this will be a single line of text field always um, with a set amount of... Um, so you've got no ability to basically override that. You must always have that as an additional thing um, within your entity. And then when you expand it down here, you've got a whole bunch of different settings that you can enable for the entity. So, for example, you can enable it so that you can attach notes and files um, to your particular entity. You've got the ability of adding a description. That's always, from a best practice point of view, really important that you try and do that. Entity type and ownership. So these are really quite important considerations from a security standpoint. So in most cases, when you want to try and, um, if your entity is just re recording standard data that typically doesn't relate to some form of um action or activity that a particular person may need to complete you want to just leave the entity type as standard otherwise if you're recording things like let's say a meeting appointment um, maybe like a whatsapp message or something like that then the activity entity is probably the one you're going to need to go for we'll leave this as a standard entity for now then the second consideration will be around okay the ownership type so this will be dictated largely by okay well what sort of security do you want to apply to this entity for people using the application? Do you want it so that you can specify, specify very granular permissions, uh, you know, across different business units or um, or things like that, or do you want it so that okay, anybody in the organisation can access this entity just by giving them, you know, read, update, delete permissions, etc. Um, so typically, in most cases, user or team will be the best one you want to go for on here. In one of the videos uh, later on in the series, we'll take a close look at some of the security concepts and we'll see how this sort of comes into play in a bit more detail from there. Now underneath here, you've got a whole load of different settings that you can enable, um, things like being able to use connections, um, SharePoint document management, that might be quite useful perhaps, uh, being able to uh, push a particular record to a queue and then somebody has to then work through that in order to complete it. So all sorts of lovely different settings that you can enable on here, which is great. So we're just gonna leave that as it is as now, we're just gonna hit create. And straight away we get we land on the sort of the entity property screen it's still being sort of set up in the background but now we can go in and start actually creating fields relationships and things like that so we're going to add on a couple of fields so let's just call the first one okay uh, booking date again it auto completes it down there we can see we've got various different data types that we can uh, specify so for those perhaps coming from a sql server background uh, most of the data types will generally mirror across to what you'd expect you know, when creating a SQL database or SQL table. Um, so for example, whole number is essentially just uh, an integer, date time, date time again, you've got currency. Uh, you've got also got different um, you know, very specific field types, such as for example, customer. Customer is a very um, sort of strange lookup field. It basically lets you assign either a, an account or a contact record to a particular entity when you create a field of that type. Then you've got also other things as well, such as being able to have uh, option uh, option set fields, uh, multi-select option set fields. Option sets is basically just like your pick list, being able to select a specific or maybe multiple values based on what you need. Um, so a whole bunch of different things that you can um, enable on here. So in this, and in most cases, each of these different field types 
will have additional properties that you can specify. So when we select date and time, for example, and we click on the advanced options, uh, we can see there's some additional options that down here. So for example, we can say, okay, it's going to be want it as a the date time value to always display based on where the user uh, is from a time zone perspective, or we want to try and just show it as UTC time zone independent. Um, so in this case, we're just going to create this field as as, um, as it is. Uh, we'll add on a few additional fields as well. So we'll create an option set. So let's just do that. So we can type. Let's say. Oh, helps if you can spell. Uh, so do option set down here. And here you have, the, when you s create an option set, you have the option of using an existing one that's a global option set that's defined in the system, or alternatively you can create a brand new one from scratch. So in this case, we'll just call this uh, booking types. Just add some additional options on there. So let's just, um, what sort of types can we do? Uh, if we do it, uh, maybe broad. Uh, let's, let's just do like maybe, maybe like a cruise. What other holiday types have we got? Maybe it's a uh, package holiday. What other types have we got? Uh, Self-catered, maybe. Yeah, so that'll probably do for now. So we'll save that. That creates this as a global option set behind the scenes. Um, and then from there, it's then basically pinned to that. We can then set a default value. So maybe just say, okay, everyone likes going on cruises, potentially. Clicked on done there. So at this particular point, the fields that we've created haven't yet been... Um, sort of saved to the entity they're just sort of there in sort of draft form we can see that the entity has been provisioned successfully in the background though whilst we've been doing this uh, and as soon as that's done we can see we've got some additional options up here that we can dig into and start to um, you know create you know add on to our particular entity this one I'm just going to click save entity So now we can see the fields have been created and we've got the ability of being able to go in and modify some of the properties on our fields once they've been created so the display name can be overridden. We can change its business requirement, whether you know a user has to provide a value when they um, save the record or not. But certain properties such as the type and also the logical name, which again, from a developer's point of view, will be the one that you probably work with you know, for the most part. You know, these are fixed now and you can't change them. So just keep that in mind. It's always really important just to, from a design decision point of view, make sure you thought about, okay, well, you know, am I naming this correctly? Is it clear enough? Am I, am I following any specific convention that we've got in place? There's always sort of, all sorts of considerations around that. So at this point then, we're going to look at creating a relationship. So let's so we want to have the ability to link, have a contact record and being able to record multiple bookings against that contact record. So how we would typically do this is we'd, we would probably, the best candidate for this would be a one-to-many relationship. You've got a few different relationship types within the application. So one to many, as we said already, is one of them. Um, so, you know, many records for one record. You've got um, a many to many relationship. So many records can be related to many other records. And you've got two different types of those, uh, which is in the, the sort of blog post accompanying this, we go into a bit more detail about. And then finally, you've also got something called connections, which is a sort of like a relationship type, but just gives you the ability of being able to relate disparate records with no fixed relationship together um, and you do that by specifying connection roles and then just going in the system and just specifying okay how is this how are these records related so a good example could be okay when you're relating contacts together okay we, we know that mary used to be the boss of john back in the day so we want to create that as a connection in the application for today's purposes we're just going to create just a box standard um, relationship we're going to want to first of all jump into the contact entity um, because this is the, the one in the one-to-many relationship. Go across to our relationships tab. We can see we get the options on here of creating either a one-to-many or many-to-one in this case. Uh, so those are effectively the same. It's just describing the different directions or a many-to-many -many in which case. Um, so for us today, we're going to do a one-to-many. We're going to find our particular entity that we've created. So it'll be the booking entity down there. We can see there's some properties that get specified for us automatically, such as, okay, what's the display name and the logical name of the lookup field that's created on the booking entity, the relationship name as well. We can also do a description. Then we've also got the, you know, the type of, of how the relationship sort of behaves. And this is quite an important thing to sort of um, consider. So when it comes to, um, you know, when you do certain actions in the application, so when you, let's say, delete a record, you don't really want to be in a situation where orphaned, 
related records are sort of sat left in the system, um, you know, with no no without being tied up automatically. What you can do with the various different type of behaviors in there, you can specify okay what type of um, action do we want to specify when think, when the record essentially is either updated, deleted, or removed, and stuff like that. So we've got some preset options on here that we can use. Um, parental uh, is the one where basically um, it basically anything you do to the parent record it applies automatically to the child record. Only you can only have one of those type of relationships on an entity. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but the custom option lets you gives you a whole range of different ways in which you can customize that. And again, it goes back to these various different actions in the application. So, okay, when I share a record, okay, share all related records. When I assign the record to a new person, okay, for all the related records, assign it to this new person as well. So really you want to, again, give some consideration to how your relationship behavior needs to be and make sure that you align that accordingly to your particular business needs. In this case, we're just going to do referential. Uh, and we're just going to select, um, we're just going to restrict delete. So what this will do is basically when I try and delete the contact record, if there's bookings existing against related to the contact, it's going to it's going to prevent me from deleting it until I've basically addressed those or remove those uh, booking records. So I'll click done down there. We're going to save the entity. You know, and for now our entity is ready to go. So if we wanted to start working with this within our Dynamics or our Power Platform, Power Apps environment. The final thing that we just want to make sure that we do is uh, is publish it or make sure we publish all customizations. So we go back to the solution level, hit publish all customizations, and then that's now being pushed out to our um, to our environment, which is really great. So hopefully with this video you've seen some of the basics involved when it comes to creating not just the entities but also fields and relationships as well. The whole top, this whole topic area is you know very huge certainly from an exam point of view you need to be aware of the basics that I've showed you on here but certainly I would encourage you to go away and really sort of focus on the various different um, you know types of fields types of entities that you can have the relationship properties and all that sort of stuff um, if you if you wanting to you know ideally do well on the exam so excellent timing our entity is all published and we've come to the end of the video so I hope this has been really useful uh, catch you around at the next one cheers